In this video, we will discuss John Story's essay, What is Popular Culture? John Story begins the essay noting that it is difficult to define popular culture. One of the reasons for this difficulty lies in the inherent contrast that is always present when we discuss popular culture. Implicitly or explicitly, popular culture is defined in relation to other conceptual categories such as folk culture, mass culture, dominant culture, working class culture and so on. Therefore, any comprehensive definition must consider this inner and comparative nature. Moreover, whichever conceptual category is employed as the absent, present counterpart to popular culture, it profoundly shapes the connotations associated with the term itself. Before defining popular culture, it is necessary to understand the term culture itself. Raymond Williams describes culture as one of the most complex words in the English language and presents three broad definitions. Firstly, culture can refer to the intellectual, spiritual and aesthetic development of a society or civilization. Secondly, it can denote a particular way of life encompassing various aspects such as literacy, holidays, sports and religious festivals. Lastly, culture can encompass the works and practices of intellectual and artistic activity that produce meaning such as poetry, novels, ballet, opera and fine art. When we talk about popular culture, we typically draw upon the second and third definitions. The second definition allows us to discuss the practices and ways of life associated with popular culture, such as seaside holidays, Christmas celebrations and youth subcultures. These are often referred to as lived cultures or practices. The third definition, which emphasizes culture as signifying practices, encompasses examples like soap operas, pop music and comics. These are commonly referred to as texts. Ideology is a crucial concept in the study of popular culture, often considered the most important category in cultural studies. Ideology has various competing meanings and is sometimes used interchangeably with culture, including popular culture. Understanding ideology is essential to grasp the nature of popular culture. Here we will briefly discuss five relevant meanings of ideology. Firstly, ideology can refer to a systematic body of ideas held by a specific group. For instance, professional ideology relates to the ideas guiding the practices of professional groups, while the ideology of the Labour Party encompasses the political, economic and social ideas shaping the party's aspirations and activities. The second definition of ideology suggests its role in masking, distorting or concealing aspects of reality. It is believed that certain texts and practices present distorted images of reality contributing to what is known as false consciousness. This distortion serves the interests of the powerful at the expense of the powerless. An example of this would be capitalist ideology, which conceals the reality of domination from those in power, who do not see themselves as exploiters or oppressors, and conceals the reality of subordination from the powerless, who do not see themselves as oppressed or exploited. This definition of ideology is rooted in the assumptions of classical Marxism, where cultural products are seen as reflections of the power relations in the economic base of society. According to Marx, the organization of economic production in a society determines the type of culture it produces or allows. Ideological cultural products implicitly or explicitly support the interests of dominant groups 
who benefit socially, politically, economically and culturally from the existing economic organization of society. It is important to note that subsequent Marxists have modified this mechanistic view and there have been criticisms of its simplicity. However, the understanding that the flow of causal relationships in society is unequally structured with the economy exerting a privileged influence on political and ideological relationships remains a central tenet of Marxism. Ideology can also be applied beyond class relations. For example, feminists analyze the power of patriarchal ideology which conceals masks and distorts gender relations in society. A third definition of ideology focuses on the idea of ideological forms which refers to the way texts such as television fiction, pop songs, novels, future films, etc. always present a particular image of the world. This definition assumes a society characterized by conflict rather than consensus structured around inequality exploitation and oppression. Texts are seen as taking sides consciously or unconsciously in this conflict and offering competing ideological interpretations of the world. Therefore, all texts are considered inherently political, influencing the dispositions and conceptions of the audience and participating in the creation of collective social understandings. A fourth definition of ideology associated with Roland Barthes highlights the role of connotations in the operation of ideology. According to Barthes, ideology operates at the level of secondary and often unconscious meanings that texts and practices carry. An example would be a political broadcast that associates the word socialism with red prison bars aiming to fix negative connotations to socialism and establish a binary opposition in which conservatism signifies freedom. This definition emphasizes the attempt to present cultural constructs as natural and universal, masking their partial and particular nature. It also suggests that certain categories such as white, masculine, heterosexual and middle class are considered the norm from which other identities are seen as deviations. A fifth definition of ideology developed by Louis Althusser views ideology as more than just a body of ideas. Althusser argues that ideology is a material practice that is encountered in everyday life, particularly in rituals and customs. These practices serve to bind individuals to the existing social order, which is characterized by significant inequalities in wealth, status and power. Examples of ideological practices within this framework could include the seaside holiday or the celebration of Christmas. These practices offer temporary pleasure and escape from the demands of the social order but ultimately reinforce and reproduce the social conditions and relations necessary for capitalism to persist. In other words, ideology functions to maintain the economic and social structures of capitalism. Defining popular culture can be approached from various perspectives. The term popular carries multiple meanings as suggested by Williams. It can mean well liked by many people or inferior kind of work or work deliberately seeking favor with the people and culture made by the people for themselves. Thus any definition of popular culture must consider the complex combination of the meanings of both culture and popular. One way to define popular culture is to view it as culture that is widely favored or well liked by many people. This quantitative index could be based on sales figures, attendance records or audience preferences. However, solely relying on a quantitative measure may prove problematic as it risks 
encompassing a vast range of cultural products and becoming conceptually vague. Therefore, while a quantitative dimension is important, it is not sufficient as a comprehensive definition of popular culture. The second way to define popular culture is to consider it as the residual category that remains after high culture has been determined. In this definition, popular culture accommodates texts and practices that fail to meet the standards required for high culture. It can be seen as an inferior form of culture. The determination of high culture often involves value judgments based on criteria such as formal complexity and difficulty. Bordieu argues that these cultural distinctions are frequently used to support class distinctions as taste functions as an ideological marker of social and economic class, legitimizing social differences. The definition of popular culture as mass-produced commercial culture and high culture being seen as the result of individual creative acts often supports claims that popular culture is inferior to high culture. Advocates of this division argue that it is clear and trans-historical with essential qualitative differences. However, there are challenges to this certainty as historical examples show how cultural products can transition between popular and high culture categories. Shakespeare and Dickens were once part of popular theatre, while film noir has crossed the boundary between popular and high culture. The contradictory meanings of the term popular contribute to the connotations of inferiority associated with popular culture. It can be seen as both good and bad, carrying the implication that it is a second best culture for those who cannot appreciate a real culture. Stuart Hall emphasizes the importance of the forces and institutions that sustain and mark the difference between popular and high culture, particularly the education system's promotion of a selective tradition. Thirdly, the mass culture perspective defines popular culture as a hopelessly commercial culture that is mass produced for mass consumption. Its audience is seen as non-discriminating consumers and the culture itself is considered formulaic and manipulative. However, statistics on product failures and financial losses challenge the notion of passive consumption. The mass culture perspective often refers to a supposed golden age when cultural matters were different, either invoking a lost organic community or a lost folk culture. But in capitalist societies, there is no authentic folk culture to measure against mass culture. Some critics within this perspective also view mass culture as an imported American culture leading to concerns about the declining of British culture under the influence of Americanization. Another perspective within the mass culture paradigm sees popular culture as a collective dream world or a form of public fantasy. It is understood as an escape that articulates collective wishes and desires in a disguised form. This perspective offers a more benign critique of mass culture, acknowledging that popular culture brings diverse dreams to the forefront. Structuralism, while not explicitly part of the mass culture perspective, sees popular culture as an ideological machine that reproduces existing power structures. Readers are considered locked into specific reading positions allowing little room for reader activity or textual contradiction. Post-structuralism, on the other hand, opens up a critical space to address these issues. A fourth definition of popular culture posits it as the culture that originates from the people. It rejects the notion that popular culture is something imposed on the people from above and asserts that it should only refer to an authentic culture of the people. 
This perspective often romanticizes working class culture as a source of symbolic protest within capitalism. However, this approach raises questions about who qualifies as the people and overlooks the commercial nature of many resources used in popular culture. Critical analysis of pop and rock music frequently employs this perspective, emphasizing cultural differences between mass culture and popular culture defined as an oppositional culture of the people. This view may lead to the belief that certain artists or cultural products would never sell out to commercial interests. However, this overlooks instances where artists with political credentials like The Clash have already engaged in commercial partnerships. A more nuanced analysis drawing on concepts such as hegemony from cultural studies could fuel further discussion on these dynamics. A fifth definition of popular culture draws on the political analysis of Antonio Gramsci and his concept of hegemony. According to this perspective, popular culture is seen as a site of struggle between dominant and subordinate groups in society. It is not simply an imposed mass culture or an oppositional culture emerging from below, but rather a terrain of exchange and negotiation. Popular culture represents a compromise equilibrium where dominant, subordinate and oppositional cultural and ideological values are mixed in different permutations. Hegemony theory allows for the analysis of conflicts within popular culture, including those related to class, ethnicity, race, gender, generation, sexuality and disability. The concept of articulation is central to this perspective referring to the process of expressing and making temporary connections between different cultural forces. The struggle between resistance and incorporation can be observed within individual popular texts and practices with different moments such as dominant, emergent and residual pulling the text in different directions. Moreover, theories of popular culture are seen as theories about the constitution of the people themselves. Popular culture becomes a contested site for political constructions of the people and their relation to the power block. It is a concept with profound political implications as it examines the power relations that shape everyday life and reveals the configurations of interests served by its construction. John Fiske and Paul Willis contribute to this perspective by emphasizing the active role of individuals in making popular culture from the products of the culture industries. They argue that popular culture is not solely determined by mass culture but is shaped by how people actively engage with and interpret the commodities and commodified practices they consume. These definitions of popular culture all share the recognition that it emerged as a distinct phenomenon following industrialization and urbanization. The idea of popular culture as we understand it today is closely tied to the period of the industrial revolution and the development of a capitalist market economy. This historical context, particularly in Britain, shaped the cultural relations within popular culture. Before industrialization and urbanization, there existed two cultures, a common culture shared by all classes and a separate elite culture produced and consumed by the dominant classes. However, the transformations brought about by industrialization and urbanization had a profound impact on cultural dynamics. The shift in employer-employee relations, the residential separation of classes in urban areas and the repressive measures taken by the government to counter radicalism created a new cultural space outside the influence of the dominant classes. This new cultural space gave rise to popular culture that functioned outside the paternalistic framework of the earlier common culture. 
The emergence and content of this popular culture were subjects of debate among cultural theorists. However, the anxieties and tensions associated with this cultural shift were instrumental in shaping the culture and civilization approach to understanding popular culture. The term popular culture is not easily definable and is inherently dependent on the context and the contrasting concepts it is being compared to, such as mass culture, high culture, working class culture, folk culture and others. Each of these comparisons carries theoretical and political implications that shape the definition of popular culture. Resolving the complexities and contradictions inherent in defining popular culture does not have a single correct solution, but offers different implications and effects depending on the approach taken.